Great. Well, Tech Central is here today with, uh, with Stafford Marcy, the uh, founder of Thumbs Up, the company that has created the Payment Pebble, which is now available from APSA. Stafford, tell us, what is the origin of the Payment Pebble project? Well, it was something that four years ago I had an experience where I actually met a lady that was in a very traumatic situation and she had a baby on her back on a blanket and she was crying and she was seeing this mayor at one of the metros here in, in Johannesburg and I discovered later on that she actually she, she gave birth to twins and one of the babies on her back was the one left that, was, that survived and the reason she lost the other baby is because they had sent someone out to switch her for water and lights and although she had a card in her pocket, although she had money on her, she couldn't pay and settle. And because her utilities were switched off, she lost one of her babies through exposure. And I thought to myself, this is crazy. This should never happen. And, you know, four years later, we have the Payment Pebble. So the origin of the company wasn't really a product. It wasn't a market opportunity. What we saw is an opportunity to solve something, to solve a problem of, of, of somebody that had lost a life. And what I try to do often is tell folks in the payment space, if things break and they don't work, people die. So if we can get this right, hopefully it saves lives. Maybe it makes a huge difference out there. But it's grown and it's incredible to see the demand for a product like this. I mean, if you take a look at your house, the guy that shows up to do your plumbing, the, the folks that do your, your electricity or uh, your landscaping or, or something goes wrong with your roof. Take a look at how you have to settle with these folks. It's a hassle. Payment acceptance is a big challenge for small and medium businesses out there. So we've built a product it's called the Payment Pebble. It's now available from APSA. Very, very exciting. You can go to apsa.co.za slash pebble and you can go and get it. And it's one of the cheapest payment acceptance devices ever released into the market. Um, definitely one of the cheapest in the world and definitely one of the cheapest in South Africa ever. And essentially what it is, it's a little device that's 50 rand a month and for 50 rand a month, it's actually your insurance plan. If you utilize it for a year, the second year, it actually drops in 50% in price per month thereafter. So for 50 rand a month, you, t you have a device that plugs into the three and a half millimeter audio jack of your phone and converts it to a card acceptance solution. Um, very, very simple. When you get onboarded, it's very, very rapid. Apps has done a lot of work in terms of optimizing the onboarding. Um, so to get your Pebble is literally 24 to 48 hours, and it should be at your door very, very quickly. Um, the amount of people that can now finally participate is incredible. Now, if you take a look at it, this is not just a, a solution, a technology that we've thrown at something. The way the Pebble works is really, really cool. So when you get the Pebble and, and you take it out the box, you know, this is the payment pebble here, and you plug it into the phone, the first thing it's going to say is, I don't know who I am. There's nothing that you have to do to your phone. You download the mobile app. So if you have an iPhone, or if you have a, you know, one of these Android phones, you download it. We support most of the mainstream Android phones. We support iOS. We support the latest Blackberries. So you download the mobile app out of the application stores. You launch it on the phone, and you'll say it says, Hello, AppSer. And when you plug the pe payment pebble in, and it's the first time, it'll say, I don't know who I am. You then provide its merchant ID that APSA gave you when you went through the onboarding process. You get a one-time pin, you enter that, and the pebble wakes up and says, hey, I'm Inky Tattoos, or hey, I'm Stafford's Plumbing. And thereafter, the identity lives in the pebble. So you can plug the pebble into a tablet, you can plug it into an iPhone, you can plug it into a Samsung phone, an HTC One, and every single time you plug it in, the identity is derived from the pebble. We never trust the phone. So it's a, it's a pretty intelligent device because the identity lives in here. It's 50 bucks a month, and if you break it, you get a replacement. And it's available from Apps now, so pretty exciting. So Stafford, uh, it's pretty simple to use as you've explained, but um, there's some pretty complex technology in here and you've had to go through, jump through some serious hoops to, yeah. to, get, this, uh, to get this right in terms of uh, the security and, and all the rest of it that had to be built into this little device. Just tell us a bit about the, the built-in security and some of the encryption that you've had to use to get this uh, used in the financial services industry. Well, I mean, the, 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 the test that the payment people had to go through is, no, is not dissimilar from a point of sale or uh, any other card acceptance device. So it's gone through all the PCI tests it's gone through all the EMV tests and essentially what you have here is a product that is continuously and consistently trying to commit suicide. So although the payment paper looks like it's asleep right now, it, as soon as you tamper it, you lift the screen, you put something in or you loosen the screws, it immediately commits suicide. When I say commit suicide, it, it loses its identity keys, it loses its transaction keys and essentially it loses its ability to be utilized and it's dead forever. 
So uh, apps has the ability to remotely, you know, one of the cool features about the Pebble is apps has the ability to remotely activate it, deactivate it, and reactivate it in the field, which is in real time. Um, also, it's got great enterprise applications. So if enterprises are looking to deploy the Pebble, um, they can do it multi-level. So the Pebble can have management upon management, so kind of an embedded play, where you can have multiple merchants using one Pebble. You can have one Pebble um, for, for many, so all to one, many to one is, is a possibility and I think that's a great benefit. But in terms of its security, yes, it's, it's living up to all the requirements from a certification body perspective. And when you plug it into the phone, it does not accept the phone as a secure device in any way or form. Um, if you take a look at it, I'll launch it on an iPhone here, and I'll, I'll, and I'll start the AppSA app on, on my iPhone. It's connected. And it says AppSA Barclays, and it'll show you AppSA. If you launch it on a Galaxy Samsung S4, um, I'll just launch it on the S4, you'll actually see that it says exactly the same thing. So the app looks and feels, um, no matter what mobile platform you're on, the same. But when you plug the Pebble in, then it assumes its identity. So let's take the S4. So I'll take the Pebble, 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 and I plug it in. And what happens is, okay, it will now launch the Pebble. So the Pebble wakes up, it says preparing the Pebble for first use. The Pebble is now handshaking in an encrypted fashion to the APSA backend and saying, hey, who am I? And recognize me as that. And it says, hello, I'm Anki Tattoos. If I pull the pebble out and I plug it into the iPhone, it'll say, hello, Inky Tattoos. I can then go ahead and start a transaction. And, and it works and feels just like a traditional pause. You enter the amount, etc. But what I want to show you is when I move it out of this phone, and you'll see it goes back to APSA. Now, the big question that everyone always asks is, you know, yeah, the audio jack is there for the Samsung, but what about the phones when the audio jack's on the side or underneath? Well, we solved that. So take a look at it. When you plug it into an iPhone, the iPhone stands up in the apps that way, but if you were to plug it in underneath, because the audio jack, the iPhone's underneath, you'll take a look, the, the Paymon Pebble screen will actually swap, um, and it will swap over. There we go, it's swapped over, so it's this way, so you can use it that way, you can plug the card in that way, but if you feel uncomfortable with that, you flick it around and the Payment Pebble switches that way. It does a 90 degree and a 180 degree. So if it's in a Blackberry on the side, it'll do a 90 degree. Top or bottom, it'll do the same. So Inky Tattoos, identity lives within the Pebble. Now, some of the security features that we've uh, implemented here is obviously a lot of tamper detection. There's a lot of security in the physical device itself. Um, it's got a secure processor inside of it that's constantly looking, uh, your know, UV detection, uh, light, it'll commit suicide. So it's a very paranoid product, just like any other card acceptance device. But we try to do some things from a form factor perspective. So you see the device is it's pretty small. We call it the Batman buckle. The engineers call it that because it kind of looks like the Batman symbol. Um, it says Payment Pebble, and at the back it says uh, Barclays and APSA. And if you look at the front, when you folks start getting your Payment Pebbles, you'll see there's a holographic stamp. So if you turn this holographic stamp, it'll actually show you the APSA Alpha symbol over there. And the reason we implemented that was our attempt to enable some form of physical repudiation. How do you know this is a real payment pebble? So this is made by one print in the world, the same company that does most of the bank notes in the world, um, is where this holographic stamp comes from. Now, no, it's not fail safe, but it's just, it's making it a little harder um, to clone uh, from that perspective. Yeah. Now, Stafford, uh, you've developed a unique pin entry method for this yes. device, which is one of the security features. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so what you do, as an example, I'll take you through the, the actual process um, of it. When you plug the payment pebble in, you'll notice there's no keypad. And also, when we get to that screen where you need to do pin entry, we don't do pin entry. We actually have a scroll wheel that pops up. And the scroll wheel on an entropy of plus one will change a random digit in the pebble. So let me explain this very, very carefully. For every single transaction, there is a true unique random number generated for that transaction inside of the pebble. You, as a user, has, you have the responsibility of changing that number digit by digit on a scroll wheel basis. So when you scroll the wheel on the phone, the phone knows nothing about what's happening up there. The mobile app is simply sending increments of plus one so if your, if your pin was 1, 2, 3, 4, and the random number was 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then when you get to 5 as your first digit, you're going to scroll to 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, and then next, and next. Now, you will never be able to decipher someone's finger movements. You'll, never, you'll be able to look at someone entering their pin and never be able to decipher. Um, the pebble has the unique random number on it, not the phone. Now, why did we do this? We did this for many reasons. Our fundamental belief is that mini keypads don't scale. 
So if you take a look at the mobile pass world, there's probably one other company that everyone knows and that's Square. And you know, they've got millions of units, but their unit is a max swiping unit. And they've got millions of those out there. To have millions of mini keypads is a very huge risk. It's a big risk. If you take a look at the vectors of attack of a physical keypad, the, the ability to look at Duncan's finger movement to de decipher a spin, the ability that someone has that when, if this had a keypad, if you had to give it back to the plumber or the merchant owner, they have your fingerprints on there. Heat detection. So there's a lot of physical vectors of attack for a physical keypad. So we came up with what we believe is a more secure form of pen entry and specifically applicable to mobile point of sale and it's a solution that will scale relative to MPOS because what we expect is we expect many many of these devices out there and we don't want to be the company that has a keypad. I think there's two philosophical beliefs with the Pebble. One is we will not have a keypad on it because we don't believe in keypads at scale from a manufacturing perspective and from a security perspective. The second thing is um, the simplicity of the product. If you take a look at how the Payment Pebble works, it doesn't require any configuration on the phone. All you need to do is download the mobile app. Now all the other MPOS type solutions that you find in the world are technological. You have to take the device and then pair it with the phone. You have to Bluetooth it. Imagine being the bank that has to do 100,000 to 200,000 uh, Bluetooth uh, handshakes every morning. We don't think that's sustainable. So we went for the audio jack. Payment Pebble plugs into the audio jack, you launch the mobile app and it just works. So we avoided the technology and focused more on solving the problem. Great. Lastly, Stafford, you've, um, many South African companies that uh, develop uh, local products end up per contract outsourcing the manufacture of those products to, to factories in China. You've decided to, to do the manufacturing here in South Africa. In fact, you've uh, contracted a high-tech facility based in Randburg. Yeah. Uh, this is an entirely South African product. Why didn't you go to China? Why, why do you feel that South Africa is capable of building a product like this? Well, let me, let me fix that. So the product is assembled slash manufactured in South Africa. And the reason we did it was multiple reasons. I think we wanted to have a closer feel um, relative to how to make this product. I mean, this product has evolved over four years. We failed tremendously in the beginning. We swapped engineering teams out. We, we stopped and then we completely, I completely started the company again from scratch numerous times. Um, the reason we did it in South Africa was simply to have a hold and an, because we wanted an understanding. We have great engineers on the software side, on the hardware side. We had to source people in, uh, in the South African context that understood manufacturing because mobile point of sale is not just about having a product. It's about having the ability to sustainably scale so you can deliver. You know, what we couldn't have happen is if apps are, as they have launched today and you get the payment pebble, you know, imagine 40,000 people want this device. We need to have the ability to scale, to deliver on that 40,000. So we needed to have a solid understanding of what it meant from a business perspective, operationally, from a people perspective. And we have a very good idea now. Now, will it stay manufactured slash assembled in South Africa? That's, a, that's an interesting question. We'll explore that as we move along. Um, but we feel very comfortable with our ability to scale right now um, and export from South Africa. Now, we, we will take a look at scale and we'll take a look at it from a business perspective. And I think we're never going to write China off. We are sourcing our components from different international territories to make up the pebble. Uh, China is not off the, uh, off the radar, but uh, yeah, South Africa is proving to be beneficial from a proximity IP perspective and an understanding as we build the product and as we mature it. Great. Thanks very much for your time, Stefan. Well, thank you. Thanks for the time.